<coughs> he used to hunt right up there in them hills. And uh, when I was about five or six years old, my morning would start. Before I went to school and even after I went to school, my morning would start with uh, uh, a plate full of eggs. And my mama taught me how to drink coffee when I was still had a bottle. And, uh, and I always appreciated that because I like a good cup of coffee. <laughs> but uh, uh, when she wanted you to wake up, she knows how to do it. So. So I'd, I'd have something to eat, and I'd turn on, we'd turn on the television, Channel 3 down there, and we'd watch Arthur Smith. And Arthur Smith and the Cracker Jacks, Carolina calling, Jim Patterson would ring the little phone, and uh, they'd be an hour's worth of programming. Now, I got to know those folks after a while, because I started working on Channel 3 uh, with Bill Hefner. If anybody remembers Bill Hefner and Country Style Roundup, I worked there from 69 to 72. But, but back then, <coughs> that stuff was live, uh, when Arthur and them was on. And Arthur said that they'd get in there about four in the morning to get ready for the, they'd rehearse the show the night before. And then they, they'd uh, get in about four in the morning and go over some of the intros and stuff and, and do all these things. And Tommy Fale was, was my favorite fella on there. I just loved the way he sung. I loved that big old deep baritone voice that he had. I can't sing like him. But, uh, but he, he really commanded the stage. And, and we got to be buddies. And, and he was like a, a uncle that you just loved. It. You know, I loved to play with it. He did this song, Scared the Pants, right off of me when I was about six years old. Scotty wrote a song about uh, uh, a Legend of the Brown Mountain Light. I'd never heard of that. And Paul said, Yeah, Pete. I don't know why he called me Pete. It's the kind of thing you can't get away from if you're dating a girl in your high school and your grandpa calls you Pete. Because she wants to know where you got the name. Uh, but. He said, Pete, I used to deer hunt right up in there. He said, I found a couple of them old lanterns up there where they, them guys would hunt each other in that song. He said, well, he got me believing that stuff because when you're little like that, you believe anything. That was as real to me as Santa Claus. And I got to listen to that song and I wouldn't even go outside for a week by myself after dark. But Tommy would start off like this. He'd, he'd do a little recitation. He'd say, way out on the Limble Mountain, where the bear and the catamount reign, with the stars growing dim on the old high gorge rim, they watch for that brown mountain line. And then he'd talk and he'd say, In the mountains of North Carolina near Linville, there exists a strange ghostly phenomenon known as the brown mountain line. This light's been observed since the early days of the covered wagon, and to this day no one can explain its mystery. Even scientists and hunters who come from various parts of the world can offer no solution. But Uncle Fate Wiseman, who used to tell this story, which to me can be as true as any other tale ever related, would tell about the legend of the Brown Mountain Lion. In the days of the old covered wagon, when they camped on the flat for the night, Stars growing dim around the old high board trail. They watch for the brown mountain line. High on the mountain and down in the canyon below. It shines like the crown of an angel and fades as it comes and goes. Way Now the old slave is gone, but his spirit wanders on, and the old 
lantern still cast its light. Night after night, 